general relativity, step by step. Right, we've looked at our approach to infinity, uh, and we recover flat space, which was a very nice, very nice prediction of um, relativity, really. What happens when our approach is zero? I guess that's the other, the other thing to consider first. Well, this is bad. This is very, very bad, because we've got infinities cropping up here and here. But that's not so... Well, it is bad, but it, it's not unexpected. I mean, even in the Newtonian uh, system, we've got gm1, m2 over... Uh, not d. I always say gm1 and m2 over d squared, over r squared, I guess. And of course, as r approaches zero, this force goes to infinity. So you're kind of expecting there to be some uh, bad... Uh, infinities at r equals zero. Of course, r approaches one is another matter entirely. At r equals one, we've not really got a metric because we're dividing by zero here. But it's clear r equals one is bad in some way. And it's extremely not non-obvious what this badness actually is. There are two possibilities. It could be a coordinate problem. Or it could be an actual physics problem. And we don't know at this stage, we don't know which one it is. If it's a physics problem, what that means is that there's some kind of kink in space-time or some kind of some kind of peculiar behaviour of objects passing through R equals one. If it's a coordinate problem, it means that it's it means that it's not quite so bad. If it's a coordinate problem, what that means is that we've just chosen peculiar units or a peculiar coordinate system to express express um, the, the, the space-time. And that coordinate system has a peculiar problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to illustrate um, the kind of thing that might happen. I'm going to give you an general relativity, step by step. I've written out the Schwarzschild metric here in two forms, the dimensionless form uh, and a geometrized form here. Uh, we've looked at what happens when R approaches infinity. We get flat space, so that's basically a tick. What happens when R approaches zero? Well, when R approaches zero, let's use this form here. When R approaches zero, we've got bad bad things going on because we've got infinities. We've got a 1 over R term here. We've got a 1 over R term here, so we've got infinity. Um, we call this the singularity, and I'll have a lot more to say about this later on. But for the moment, I just want to observe that f equals g m1 m2 over r squared, the Newtonian physics law. This blows up as r approaches infinity, and so it's not entirely unexpected that as r approaches zero, uh, we've got infinities. Now, of course, what happens is... Well, the interesting thing here is what happens when r approaches 1 what happens. Or I guess R approaches 2M, if you want to consider in this, this system here. Well, we've got something rather peculiar going on, because the coefficient of T squared becomes equal to zero, and the coefficient of R squared, dr squared, this thing is we're dividing by something that's approaching zero. So when R approaches 1, we have got bad weirdness. But we're not quite sure what that bad weirdness is. It might be a coordinate weirdness, or it might be a physics weirdness. If it's a physics weirdness, it means that there's some kind of kink in space-time that um, makes our life difficult for objects close to there. That it, it means that when r is approximately equal to 1, there's some badness in the structure of space-time that makes life very difficult for us. And we know that that's the case when R approaches zero. When R approaches zero, all sorts of terrible things happen. But at the moment, we're not quite clear if that actually does happen. Maybe we've just chosen poor units, or we've chosen a poor coordinate system that makes things look very badly behaved near R equals 1. So maybe, maybe, maybe the apparent bad behavior of space-time near r equals 1 is due to our poor units of poor choice of coordinates. And I'll show you how that might work right now. If I choose, if, if I have a little event here, here's me at an event, I can choose some coordinates here. These are coordinates of 
t equals 0, t equals 1, t equals 2. And I can choose, I'm going to choose in red, we've got, uh, that's going to be x equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 3. Perfectly straightforward coordinates. However, what happens if I then decide, or if I have a mathematical uh, trick to make these coordinates bend over? This is all flat space. So there's no problem with having this uh, as a coordinate description of, of flat space. And I might choose my t coordinates to sort of do this kind of thing here. So what that means is if I flick over to, let's say, green, I've learned how to use colours now, I can follow this line of constant x quite nicely. This can be my world line. I can follow this line here until I get to about here, at which point, if I go back to black, if I can figure out, there it is, my light cone looks like this. So I can't follow this coordinate system round here any longer. I can't follow this red line of x equals 2 any longer, simply because it's outside my light cone. Um, I've obviously chosen stupid coordinates here that don't allow me to follow the, the, um, the space coordinate here. Certainly not beyond a particular point here. It might look sensible around here, but of course everything turns to custard out here. Maybe something like that is occurring near r equals 1 or r equals 2m. That's, that's, that's obscuring the nature of the physics in that area. We'll see that it is later on. I could even have a system like this. I could have units that do this, but have a sudden kink in them like that, so that when I draw my orthogonal units, they might look like this. They might suddenly behave very, very badly near this kinked coordinate system here. But of course, nothing physical happens there. I can be sitting here, and I can go la 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 la. I can go follow along my world line here, and I can just carry on doing it. The fact that we have chosen crazy units that don't behave themselves in this region of space-time here doesn't make any difference to the physics. The physics doesn't care how you describe it. And yes, there's a kink here, but I can have a nice world line that's just cruising along, uh, and I don't care that there's a kink in the physics. It makes the mathematics very hard, but the physics doesn't care. We will see later that near r equals 1, or r equals 2m if you want to use these coordinates here. Oops, I'm in red. Near r equals 1, we have got a coordinate. You call it a coordinate singularity. Or a coordinate mismatch, or a coordinate, coordinate pathology, I think you call it. Pathology. at r equals 1. We'll see later that we've got a coordinate pathology, but this is extremely non-obvious. Okay, I'm going to stop there. What I've done is show you some examples of coordinate systems that have got poor properties in certain regions of space-time. And we'll see that that's the case for the Schwarzschild um, system. Okay, stop there. Stop.